people have asked, uh, were we disappointed not being able to play last weekend? Of course we were. Guys were excited. We actually had a, a great Thursday practice um, and, and we're preparing for the game really well. Uh, I was told during practice that uh, Charlotte was not going to come and I waited till practice was over because we still needed to finish a, a good practice and have good game preparation that week um, before I told the players. And they, they actually thought I was kidding at first because I can be a smart aleck. And I said, Charlotte's not coming. And they said, oh, come on, coach, that's not funny. <laughs> I said, well, it's, it's not funny. It's really true. Uh, and then Rick Steinbacher really worked hard this weekend to try to find somebody for us to, to play that, that fit the needs of both universities and and that didn't work, but he, he talked to over a dozen, uh, 13, 15 people or something to try to make it work, and it just didn't work. So the, the negative is we'll go to Boston College with a bunch of practice in one game. Um, the, the positive is that you, you get easy back. Uh, you'll, you'll have Des Evans back. Um, we, we should be healthy. We should be fresh. Um, and the guys will be excited about playing. It gives us two weeks to prepare for Boston College. So um, I've, I've told them it is what it is. Uh, it could happen again sometime this year. So uh, this is the year of uncertainty. So so don't get into I'm up, I'm down, I, I hate this. I, it doesn't matter. It is, it is what it is. So uh, we'll be ready to go in two weeks at, at Boston College. Had a really good practice today. So they, they've come back. They've been re very resilient. Uh, and I'm, I'm proud of them. They, uh, uh, they've been uh, they've been really amazing uh, all year to to see how they've responded uh, since those calls that were made at spring break. So, uh, if I could answer any questions. All right. Uh, first up is Greg Barnes. Greg, go ahead. Hey, Mac. Uh, since the end of practice on Thursday, kind of kind of what was the approach with the team over the weekend, and kind of what's the game plan uh, this week? Greg, what? At that time, on Thursday, we thought we would be playing this week, so we, we just flipped our weekends and said, let's make this the open date. So we did exactly what we would have done on an open date. We had uh, some weightlifting on Friday morning, went to class, and then they were off Saturday and came back to work Sunday. Um, and we'll do the same thing this weekend. We'll, we'll have a, a little scrimmage with the young ones on Thursday. We'll be in pads all three days this week. Um, but what we will do is, is they'll lift on Friday morning, um, go to their classes, have Saturday off, and then we'll come back and start preparing uh, game week pre preparation for Boston College. How, how do you balance trying to give the, the guys that played a lot against Syracuse reps to kind of get through those first, first game jitters, if you will, with needing to get some of the younger guys who didn't play a lot of reps? How, how do you try to balance that out these next two weeks? What we're doing is we're, we're working a lot with fundamentals and some team period with the older guys. And then we're doing a lot of uh, scrimmaging and, and work with the young ones. Uh, for like inside drill today, the young ones took a lot. And, and uh, so we're trying to just balance the older ones, the experienced ones, make sure that they know what to do against Boston College and, and make sure they're in great shape. They're still running a lot. Uh, but we're still working a lot of the young ones in right now that, that would have gotten some playing time against Charlotte uh, that we lost. Thanks, Mac. Thank you. Next up is Aaron Beard. Hey, Mac. Um, I'm curious. I mean, granted, none of this has been like anything you've dealt with before, but having have you had a time where you had maybe two straight off weeks not going from like regular season to bowl? You know, but during a season, can you recall any time like that? Aaron, I really can't. So what we told our, our players and coaches is let's just start the season over. Syracuse was a, a game. It, it's done. Uh, so we're, we're two weeks out from the opener. So let, let's just go back and restart. And, and that's what we're trying to get uh, their mentality to be. And, and to follow up, I guess you guys have room in November in theory to – maybe get a replacement game? Is that something you're going to look at, trying to get one more game at some point later? Yes, Rick is uh, in the process right now. Uh, after he couldn't find a, a good combination for them or us, he's trying to find a, a game uh, on that uh, Friday or Saturday the week before Notre Dame. So he's working on that right now. Thanks, Mac. Thank you, Rick. Next up is C.L. Brown. 
Hi, Mac. Um, kind of lost in the shuffle of losing the Charlotte game was uh, the announcement about Miles uh, Wolfolk. Um, I was just wondering what what is uh, free safety or strong safety looking like right now in terms of uh, who's who's kind of rotating in with that first team. Yeah, we're we're disappointed that Miles will not continue to be with us, but he does have his degree. Uh, he did so many great things for us, and, and we're proud of him and, and happy for him. Um, we're, we're lucky that we have great depth at that position. So we'll move Trey Morrison back to safety from nickel. And, and then you, you've got uh, Trey Morrison, Don Chapman, um, Cam Kelly, and, and Geo Biggers. Um, so you've, you've got a lot of guys uh, still. You're, you're in a good shape with two deep. So we, we feel like we're still okay there. And that's another thing that, that gives us a, an extra week to prepare those guys uh, without Miles being in there. And uh, can you just speak to what what Miles brought in terms of his, you know, what, what you'll be missing in the leadership and kind of just the veteran knowledge that he had? Yeah, Miles was uh, a spokesperson for the team. He, he was uh, uh, very vocal during practice. Uh, he was one of the guys that uh, had a lot to say with the leadership committee. Um, he, he is very smart, and he, he gives some great ideas. And he, he helped line up the, uh, the younger guys in the secondary because a lot of those other guys haven't played as much. And, and he was definitely the coach on the field in the secondary, and, and that's something we'll miss. Okay, let's go over to Andrew Jones. Hey, Coach, going back to what you would have missed, what you guys missed from not playing Charlotte, how how significant is the the lack of reps that some of the second and third team guys would have gotten in a game like that? And then you just mentioned a few minutes ago about how you're trying to address that a little bit, but game action is game action. Yes, Andrew, it's uh, it, it's not good. We're we're disappointed because we that's why that game was scheduled. It felt like it was uh, would be a competitive game, but we would get some work on our depth and. Um, and we've missed that. So what we're trying to do now is, is, and especially on Thursday, we'll have more team against each other, like a, a real scrimmage, and, and let the younger ones just scrimmage each other and, and try to uh, gain some of the reps that we lost in that situation uh, back on Thursday. You mentioned Josh Zudu, who will be ready for BC. If you would have found an opponent for this coming weekend, would you anticipate he would have played this weekend? I don't think so. I, I don't know, but the, uh, he's not 100% right now. He's doing a lot of drills and things, so it would have been very questionable. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Andrea Adelson, you are up next. Uh, um, Matt, can you just describe the difficulty in trying to get uh, an opponent on short notice and what all went into that as you were uh, burning up the phone lines and then – as the follow-up to that, do you, is there an emphasis from the ACC just to try and get a non-conference game in? Is that why you're trying to get one for November? Andrea, the number one, it was a roller coaster because you'd say, yeah, this guy thinks they may can play. And then I'd get excited. And then Rick would call me back and say, no, nah, they're not going to be able to play. Um, a, a lot of it is um, coaches get in their routine and, and they wanted this open date before they start their conference play. And so a lot of things like that that just didn't fit. Um, but I'm, I'm telling you now, he really tried. Uh, and, and we wanted the game because you, you've got 120 players on a team and only 11 play at a time. So the, the more snaps that you get, the more opportunities it is for people to play. So if, if they would have let us play 12 this year, we would have played 12. Um, so I, I think that's that's the important thing more than anything else. Plus, we've got a really young team, and we miss spring practice. So the more snaps that we get, uh, the better it's going to help us for the future. All right, uh, let's go over to Ross Martin. Hey, Mac, with um, with Trey Morrison moving to safety, who, who steps in at Nickelback for for y'all, and what's the depth there? Well, it would be um, Jaquarius Conley first. And then um, um, Weldon Spotsville. Those would be the, the two guys that would step in. Do y'all feel comfortable with, with Conley as a freshman playing a lot of nickel, y'all? Because y'all are a nickel 
pretty much the whole game against Syracuse. We do. Uh, Jaquarius is one of the best athletes on our team. So, so a lot of those freshmen are, are getting more looks now that, that we've been practicing eight or nine weeks. We've been practicing a long time. Uh, so hopefully they'll know what to do. But, but uh, uh, those are guys we're just going to throw out there and let them play. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, Mark Armstrong, you are up next. Uh, Mac, I, am I understanding correctly that you guys were searching for another Charlotte-type opponent rather than anybody that could play on that weekend? Mark, you'd have to talk to, to Rick and Bubba because they did it all, but we were trying to find somebody to play that fit us and fit them. Um, so uh, that that was a thing, and Andrea kind of approached it. Nobody's ever done this stuff before. Nobody's ever tried to find a game in the first of the year where you just say, oh, wonder who's not playing this week. And and then you, you're looking for games that were canceled for COVID, and you're – looking at people that might want to play or might not want to play you. So, um, and, and then you have to work out an agreement. Um, the, there has to be a financial agreement. And um, so all of those things have, have really never been approached. So I, I think it's new for everybody, Mark. And it's, it's just, it's not as easy as, as uh, leaving here Thursday. I said, ah, we'll get a game. And then you think about it. It's kind of crazy to think that you can just say, hey, let's call so-and-so and see if they want to come. Uh, it's just it's just different. 